Morrison Structural Weekend that was held at Neil House in East Grinstead on the weekend of February the 14th, St Valentine's Weekend, 1987. It was organised by the Morris Federation. It was really the second of a pair of weekends, the first of which was held last year uh, in East Anglia. And we concentrated on Cops for Morris and the, essentially the traditions that we hadn't done the previous year. It seemed almost impossible to say what we covered. We started with Bampton on the Friday evening, we've ended up with Sherburne on the Sunday afternoon, but the video covers most of the sessions, uh, both for the dance and the talking uh, side of it. The way we ran the weekend was to teach a tradition and then show a cine film of either um, the way it was actually been taught or uh, a good interpretation by some other side so that people who were um, meeting something for the first time had something then to see and understand which was more than just the workshop instructional. Foot up, foot down occurs both at the beginning and halfway through the dance and it's basically an ordinary um, eight bar foot up, you dance on the spot and do four capers turning outwards to face down. I'm sure we can all do that um, <coughs> in about half an hour's time, but at the moment we can stand and see they all stick we are, right? Of the middles, the first pair, first 
corner change. Right? <laughs> Second corner change. And then the person who was number three. The, the two middles, as it were, rotate to end up you in the middle there, you in the middle here, and line to three facing. Right? One and two face down, you then face down. Face down. Right, right. Back to where you were, and let's now work that through again. Right? <laughs> This is where the fun and games start, right? Three and six change places. Then the other two change places. Then rotate in the middle to be lines of three facing games. And we're going to do that in four bars, right? Which step? Which step? Which step? Double step. I'm glad you mentioned that because for the next figure it changed. Right? Can I get you back to where you were? I would do that little bit to music. You know, the rest of the sounds on the spot. Well, it, it sort of all happens simultaneously. These just turn the face to that point, right? Well, you dance all the time.
I know. It's whoever was, if I'm number one, it's whoever was there and there, the first person. They go back to where they started from. <coughs> well, you know, behind it, right? Oh, yes. And then, then the first diagonal changes, right? And second diagonal changes. And we ought to be back when we start. Is that right? Back to where you were. Pushing up. When the top couple go down and weave through, they don't actually have to wait the two bars. The objective is to go through as soon as the second pair goes across. You know, so it looks very confusing to the outside world. It is snow. Did you know that? It's snow in the morning. Yeah. Yes, we're here for food. It's getting worse. This is going to be the workshop to end all workshops. We're going to do it all this week. So, first of all, first bar into your place. And then one, <coughs> and two, and cross. And that's four bars for all that, right? So let's get our way through to that position. At this stage, we need to put up and foot down again, and then get into the second half of the dance. <coughs> right? Which is completely different. Right, from there. Everybody else is doing one, two, three, and you're doing arm waving, right? 
what the floor changes. Should we have floor. changed when they changed? Yes, the bottom. So back to where you were, and let's just walk again, right? In fours, first corner change, second corner change. Morris Hay are the top six, and the bottom pair face across. Oh, carry on. Hold Hay, hold Hay. Eight bars of it. Then, the middles cross. First diagonal in the middle. Second diagonal in the middle. Brilliant. And then we do another Morris Hay at the top, where the bottom still dance across. Right. Morris Hay at the top. These hays get confusing after a while. <laughs> then it's all cross again in fours, first diagonals, second diagonals. And then it's the Morris Hay from the bottom and the top pair dance across. Right? You go down, down. Middles go down this time, right? Then middle diagonals cross, middle, one middle cross. One of you, then the other. <coughs> Morris Hay at the bottom, other space across again. <laughs> and you actually have reversed the set. Right? Does the Hay go down or up? <coughs> go down. Um, the, the end is the top, as it were. So when the two bottom Hays, the I hate That's to call the them middles. <laughs> the lower middles go That's down. The top. That's right. Yeah. But, so, we didn't go back to where you were and we didn't go through that bit. <laughs>
In which case, you then all face the centre and dance, bringing all in. Form a circle, dance on the spot, caper in the end. Right? Yeah. Uh, do you smell that sense of hate? The end is a way to cross, so don't stop. <laughs>
Um, there's nothing wrong with it. You know, uh, I think in today's day and age, people do dance uh, more than one to the basis. Even in the traditional signs, the sign on Avenue, um, although there was a basic step for most of the dancers, they still had a long dance or two that went to a different step just for the sake of variety. Okay, so it's not uncommon. Then, all right, so Bleddington. Um, basic step is the, the classic console Morris step. Uh, but the Bleddington style is affected by most of them was to dance fairly low. Was, don't try and get a great deal of height. That's longer. Right? Bleddington, yeah, get down, right? Let's just try a little bit of step. Yeah. Which one do I want? Well, say Jim. Sharp 
and certainly by the Champion Morris for year after year. I think the last one died about 1948. And these affected a different style. First of all, they did hooks instead of galleys, and they danced a bit more squat down to the ground, and they did the sort of so capers, which I think we commonly do. One reason for adopting that rather than the earlier style, if you follow the earlier style, it gets more like the other dance traditions in that area. So again, the stylized Bleddington to be like the young Bleddington style, a bit more evolved. Now, what do I mean by a hook as distinct from galley? Well, it's a turning movement, most of the time, you, know, you actually turn on it. You step and come around low before you do your twist, right? The first movement is close to the ground. Not up here like a galley, you start low and then come up. Can we practice doing Put ups and Thank you. 
those who've done Leddington before knew the trick. <laughs> so, you go across this, one, two, three, and one, two, three, hop. Right? In other words, you're already coming back on the three hop. The next key thing is what do you do with the first step of a hook? Right? You turn and you point the foot angle away from the set. So that you basically your track is one, two, three, and one, two, three, hop. Right? Try that. <coughs> Let's do those four figures straight off, right? 
flow of the... Cast 
the sign. And then when you get to a bunch, face in, right, and then hook out. Right, there's two different approaches. One is the sort of the little bunch with all got your backs to the middle, you know, against the wall. The other one, where you actually come to a, face your opposite across the set. I want to look quite effective. Let's try the tight bunch facing out the side. Just haze.
left and right in the other figures, right foot in front for the hay. Um, when you have to fudge, you don't put an extra step in, you actually change hops into a change for the foot, or you could change feet you make into a hop. In other words, Bledington is one of these traditions, there are no fake steps, right? Uh, it's very simple, nothing fussy. You know, Remember in the competition they listen for the extra chinks of the bells. So nothing, you just have to fudge. I say, instead of doing, you may have to do one, two, three, four, or one hop, two hop, as is necessary. And you said right foot into the head. Do you mean right foot side fudging? That way into the No, when you do the side step, you side start with right foot, right? But yeah. the hay is still conventional, so I would. The hay, you I may have, have to change foot. feet. Yeah, I would start left foot because I'm here.
Dave Laven, though, did I? Yeah. 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 I will apologise for that. Oh. Right. <laughs> because I was going to say that as you turn, remember that as you turn, that first step has to split the angle of going round. You, know, you point the foot the other way, otherwise you don't get all the way round. No, but most of you didn't anyhow. <laughs> it's trying to work. Next one. 
to be presented. First of all, um, two of you, um, which one? you two, go and stand up on a music, right? Basically, number one comes on, and everybody says, rah, 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 do it, G. So he starts off doing it. Don't have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and the capers, he turns around, and the next one capers in. So we now have a double G, right? And they do it. But as they pass, the next one's caper in. Right? As they pass, the last two caper in. At which point, we then all hook right, right, eight to set. Right? And we do a whole hay middles going down. Oh, yes. <laughs> I belong to a psychic who doesn't believe in killing itself. <laughs> Not when we're all age 50. Just <laughs> right. That's a very simple way of presenting the same dance. But that then makes it either a coming on or coming off. Or you know, a dance, not a dance, and it's you know, a big dance in its own way. Let's say A1 doing it. Do you mean um, to say you come on with that and then you do a set? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, you've done a dance and that's your last one, you see. I mean, you can do the whole day rounds and off a range and just dance off. Just on, right? We will walk to coffee, we will not be served. Long line.
since he first taught it to the, to the <coughs> sides. Um, they used to do it longer like, they used to do this. Right? When they got to see the Bennington men, they said, no, no. In the, the leg back, you keep the body upright. That was one of the ways they differed. In Longborough, when you do that, the hands go forward, you know, rather than to side. And when you go forward, because you automatically uh, you know, lean a bit into it. But Bennington and his sister, they to the side, and the body's upright for that bit. Right? Uh, now, the next problem is the uprights, splits, or whatever you like to call them, uprights, anyhow. You know. um, the old side did the just as sure one did, you know, cross, cross together and jump. Right? The other side couldn't get on with it and they did cross, cross, caper, caper. Right? Now, um, I have a bit of film that uh, Lionel Bacon took of George Hathaway teaching the Traveling Morris to do, you know, the Bennington Morris in the sort of approved way. Sort of. And I've interviewed three people who were there who've been teaching Bennington on the basis of that incident. Yeah. And all have a different idea about what George Hathaway taught them. See? The thing is, George was crippled with that arthritis. So he actually was showing how to do it with his hands on the bonnet of the car. <laughs> you see? So there was room for a little bit of <laughs> difference of opinion. So you have from Cross, cross, caper, caper, to cross, 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 and kick, depending on who you get it from. And Lionel Bacon, in particular, insists, because he took the pictures, you see, of one, two, three, and then he jumps to the side on this as well. Zigzag across, as it were, when doing it. Now, what I want you to do today again, is cross, cross, Kick. Right? Kick up. It'd be up in front. That's the thing. The thing that came to us for Chosen Rocks is that it wasn't splits kicking up behind, it was kicking up in front. Because when you do splits, you know, like this, you basically kick up and few people can raise the leg up the front. So basically it looks like an up behind movement. And what they do is the kick up. Right? Let's just try that. Movement, you know, don't 
jump a lot of rain on that one. Think of it almost, don't need to get the feet off the ground. Now, if you could do this up on your toes, as it were, ready to put the effort into the sprint. If you make it all the same all the way along, the dancers get boring. You know, you've got to shade the emphasis. Like I try to explain with the stepping in Barrington last night, you know, when you listen to it, you hear different emphases on each beat on how you're dancing. That's part of the measure Let's try and William and Nancy. If you don't know William and Nancy, the figures you had before, uh, the chorus consists of first corner, do one of this one thing, second corner, middles do it, and then you hook into the hay and do a half hay. Right, I'm sure we've got it on the basis of that. Thank you. 
some of the other things about Pledington, something which makes the things that make Pledington interesting as a position to concentrate on. Um, I suppose we ought to face down to Zawa well, the sort of thing. Gansizar is another one in single packet. The Gansizar pattern is called a single dance. I don't know why. A single double dance. A single. We cross over now and also cross back on the extending or something. The only thing is that we may be doing the same chorus movements we've just done, but travelling. So that you try and keep the line as you go. So that, for example, on the first slow cadence, or the furries, the leap bit, you know, the last bit, you should be in a line, you should all go up together. All the feet should be in a line. Yeah. This is a workshop, don't have to do it. But then, let's try the examples up. I don't expect you to get in a, in a tired line, it needs practice. Whole thing.
sets again, and we'll start off the door issue. There's no American tradition of leapfrog as a sport, you know. Um, and you actually have to teach them what it's all about. I made the mistake of telling Arthur about it's not bending over. significantly depending on who it's collected from. Now, I personally like this sort of original sharp way with lots of short, three short side steps. I went to make my sit back but can't get it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, and hook into the hay, right? And half hay. Let's just do that. La da 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 da
spiders in the face, right? And number three goes over. You should do it this way. Right? That means you've got to leap a long way forward. Right? Cross, cross, together, jump. Like up. Right. Now having landed, having landed, you should be just past the top. Right? And you go down immediately and the number one then goes over. So the two jumpers are at the top. And that's your turnover. So let's just try it slowly. One, two, three, D. Yeah. 
fair old spring here. Yum bum dee dee yum bum dee dee yum bum dee dee.
picture opposite. Okay. We're going to learn a double duke called Shepherd's Tale. And it's interesting because it isn't like the normal double duke because the bits are shared between the two dancers. Now we're learning it together, but in fact what happens is that number one does the first half and then number two does the, the repeat of the bit. So the first bit, the foot up, you know, do this facing, the foot up is two bar, two double steps, shuffle and a jump, right? One, two, three, and one, two, three, and shuffle. Right? Can we try a little bit of shepherd's hay? If people have trouble with shuffles, we'll go into that as well. Right? <laughs> Music. 
be done, but you're minus one, one crucial bit of information. When a movement finishes on a shuffle, the other person shuffles into their bit. So whenever one of you is doing a shuffle, the other one is doing a shuffle as well. Right, so you don't get the amount of rest that you imagine. Let's say start with a foot up. Foot up, clap, foot up, RTBs, foot up, other clap, foot up, uprights, foot up. Foot up together a bit, right? Let's try it. They're across. You, you, this is done dancing to somebody with a double jig. So it makes it unique.
before Jack said, Roy, you better start on the left foot. Why? says I. He said, well, the dancers all start on the left foot. And I said, well, for three years I've watched everybody carefully and I know it's a right-footed tradition. Oh, no, it isn't, says Charlie. And they all get up and dance off the left foot. Within an hour, they're back on the right foot. <laughs> They had all agreed at some stage or other how it was to be done, uh, and they often you know, sort of came So there is this problem. So what, what actually happens with the stuff? Well, first of all, you come together with dancers, and you teach them dance, like I'm doing this workshop. You, know, and you, you gloss over the subtleties of it because there is the time. There isn't the opportunity, because there are too many of you. I can't correct 36 people and keep you corrected as a group. It can't be done. So you do that in, in your, your team, you see, and then you find that, yes, you polish up certain details, and then, of course, your side doesn't look like anybody else's anymore, because, of course, they dance a consensus. You all do the same thing, not knowing whether it's right or wrong, but you know what you're thinking about whether it's right or wrong. And by the way, I mean you sort of hype you dance and make you wave your hands in this. So you end up, which is why with the tradition, who doesn't think about it either, depending which six you get up. Depends on how the dance turns out. Uh, whether that's a strength or the weakness of Morris, that's what the Morris is like. Uh, um, the only more I draw out of this is that if you're trying to get good dancing, uh, there is no real guidance for the tradition, because although the tradition includes good dancers who are aware of dance, there's no analysis, no jargon, no way of expressing it. All these things uh, exist, not in the traditional way. Um, you've really got to make it up for yourself, you know, and that's the contribution of Now, in a sense, you see, um, that's right. Those people who sort of said, oh, I, I want to catch the Morris, you know, and I'm going to produce carbon copies of this museum piece, uh, and that's not what the Morris has actually been about. The great thing about written notations, particularly in the notation form that we use, is that you can't actually recreate something from it. You can create something from it, but not recreate. Okay? And I believe because it's this spontaneity to get into this, this you know, your, pers your own personal view, which really makes the most different from any dance form else. You go and watch Banny, I know everybody does it differently. They don't dance to the music, and they have no idea of balance. Also, they've got lots of clever things, but it doesn't have the same sort of sparkle and involvement and so on, I think. Well, let me put this back over here, and I'm sure we can make up some sets if we move the chairs. These chairs come up somewhere else. Yes, sir. Ah, all right. It doesn't say like it. <laughs> sets to six. We're going to do a little bit of standing hardcore for stick dance, anyhow. Yeah. I better explain where Stand and Harcourt appeared from. The, as far as I'm aware, this is the story. Uh, Percy Manning's employed man, T.C. Carter, who by profession claimed to be a geologist, who actually was no more than a geologist's assistant, which really means he was an odd job man who worked with people at the university. Uh, he was employed by Percy Manning to actually go out and collect antiquities which meant he actually did all the field work for Percy Manning, going to the villages and finding who were the Morris dancers uh, and some of the back, you know, back there and so on. And it, it's his sort of magnificent lists of the names of people in the villages, which are core, of course is the core of the work that um, Keith Chandler's been able to achieve. And if you actually know who the people are, you can find parish records, the census returns and so on start to build an understanding of where they lived, when they lived, how old they were, who they were related to, and what were their connection with the rest of the team, and things of that sort, all which um, are really fundamental to understanding the 19th century, but absolutely nothing to do with the host of that. Well, he at Stanton Harcourt found uh, a dancer who described the choruses of some eight or nine dancers. The, a friend of um, Clive Carey's, uh, a 
chap called Williams, not Alfred Williams, but another one, Arthur, and his wife, Jean, who um, lived in Oxford immediately after the First World War, were aware of the Manning's manuscripts and tried to follow up some of these contacts. Uh, they did best in Bampton, because of Morris and Bampton, and they recollected a fair bit of the Bampton Morris to dance in tune. Um, they got some tunes from Ascot and the Witchwood, but it um, stands in Harcourt. They got hold of uh, another source, one of the, the family of the pipe and tabor player, and from them, got, from that person, got a very detailed description of Nutting Girl. Uh, these people had no technical words, they just wrote down in all of these sort of words of one syllable that this chap danced like this. You know. And you'd be surprised how you know, hey, things like this, how easy it is to describe it in terms of closed sidestep. You know. But if you haven't got those two words, closed and side, you know, how long winded it gets to try and explain these things. But therefore, what we have is one dance, a handkerchief dance, described in considerable detail. Uh, one or two tunes, at least one for a dance that we haven't got, um, and these um, notations of chorus movements, uh, which were obtained some 20 years earlier. Now, you find quickly when you look at these chorus movements, you also find another thing, is that the repeats are forgotten. Yeah, if you do sort of, you know, it gets described as, you know, and it doesn't sort of fit the dance and things like this, you know. It's just little remarks or saying endlessly repetitious. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what they mean is all repeats and things like this. So, yeah, to produce dance of them require a small amount of interpretation and this intellectual leap to say that one person collecting for somebody, uh, that gives us the figures, somebody else collecting for somebody else at a different time gives us the choruses and you put these two together. Uh, you could say that's intellectually wrong, um, yes, and you're quite right, and therefore we wouldn't have a Stanton Harcourt tradition if we believed you. Okay. So you put this together and the judgment really is, does it actually make sense in the end? Because you can't do any more than what's been done in this circumstance. Well, let's, let's start. Left foot tradition, first, once to yourself, face your opposite. <coughs> Not that uncommon to, uh, you know, to do once yourself facing in and dance that sort of way. First figure is dancing on the spot. Right, can we just dance on the spot? Six bars and an ordinary sort of back step. Well, we've got to have these in our hands. Let's do the green stick. because of the sources it wouldn't have mentioned it anyhow. But when we worked this up at Bath as a tradition, we found it was quite satisfying not to clash, because often, well most of the time, you're doing a back step at the moment you want to clash, you know, and that distorts well. It's much better on the jump to actually jump and put the stick in the air. Right, that's what punch it up like that. Right, second figure, forward and back twice. Now, this is not a half jib. You actually dance to face. Right? And back step, and to face again. So forward and back twice is not a half jib. Not shoulder to shoulder, it's just a little bit forward to face, <coughs> and then back away. Let's do that. <laughs> the tune's getting close.
field however. The crossover, which is the sort of third figure, is unusual in the, in the sense that it's like an ordinary crossover, right, in the first bit, turn and back away, but you come back on the same track, so it's the other shoulder to come back. Right. It's not so sick, it's when you do back to back, you do right shoulder and left shoulder, it's really right shoulder and left shoulder rather than right shoulder twice. So it is consistent with the tradition. Let's do crossover. because you went for capering it capering in in the last two bars. Right? So range is pretty straightforward. Doing the hay in the choruses where there's a half hay, you do it smartly so that the back step's done facing your opposite. Right? You have to get a move on, quickly change ends and back step. Now let's learn the chorus. Everybody Hold to stick up, evens, and we hit. Hit alongside, tips on the green alongside you. Right?
when done and unless told otherwise, um, it isn't a good idea to carry your sticks like that. Right? Basically because you get a good firm grip on it and you go charging around and it's being painful. Normally, you tilt the point down and hold the stick so it's a bit up the back of your arm. But when you dance, like this, a little bit of swinging to help you dance without actually uh, being a menace with it. There is the alternative way of doing it like that, you know, it doesn't really suit. That's right, yeah, it doesn't feel right. So you dance like that. No, holding a stick, you hold it between your thumb and the top of your hand like that. That's the bit that matters. And the rest of the hand is really for controlling the stick, not for holding it. In a sense, if you want to grip it tightly so that your knuckles go white and so on, I suppose you're welcome to, but you don't have to. Like you can hold your stick quite well after that. Now, that means that you can use plenty of movement with the stick when you're hitting, without actually having to do this. Right? So when you hold your stick up, I don't really want to see like that. I want to see a good stick movement, but you can rotate it here, right? And you use the fingers to push it, and it rotates. So you get a lovely looking, yeah, lots of movement, but that necessarily a uh, lot of effort having to go into it. There is a, one other trick which is important to know, is that at the moment of impact, you grip the stick. Right? As you hit, let's just hold it up like this. Right? When you hit a stick, you use, as it were, the freedom you've got to get a good apparent swing into it. But at the moment of impact, you grip. So that if he forgets, right, it doesn't do any more damage. Right. The worst thing is to say when people are cheerfully doing this and relying on the other stick to stop the movement. Because if he's holding it up like that, both hands, if he holds it too low, you've got him. Right? If he holds it too high, you've got him. Right? You hold it about the right length, which is eye to eye. You cr cross the eyes. Not the T's yeah. as far as cross the eye back there. Yeah. And then if you grip as you hit, if anything happens to stick like it breaks or his arm falls off, and that is like, <laughs> you don't actually go any further. Because you hit, you swing it. I say you swing it like that, you swing into the palm of the hand, and at the moment of impact, it's actually firm up there. It minimizes the shock up your arm. It maximises the bounce, so you get a nice crisp noise, and so on. It's both the safest and most noise-effective way of using your stick. Right. So like that, and so into the back of the palm there, so that you can grip it at the moment of impact. Yeah. Oh. Nightingale, we're going to do, comes in two ways. Two forms. Basically, if the Ewans hold the stick up, right, the odds hit three times. Right, three of those in half hay, and then in the repeat, the other side has a go, right? Now, where the uncertainty comes to interpretation is whether uh, they don't trust you enough, he holds it up this way. Or when he really trusts you, they hold on both ends like that. And he faces across and you hit dead. Now, when you're doing that, it's very important where the stick is. Right? If it's too low, you've got him inside. You know, it is, to my mind, it's important that you hold it above your head. Well up. Straight above your head. No, I want a taller plan and get it right. <laughs> Hold it well, we're dancing at the moment facing, but remember, hitting from the back is a characteristic of quite a few of the choruses and stand and half court. So, should we just try that? Let's just do a chorus. <laughs>
The alternatives are in this stick tapping, the one holding it capers as well, which tends to be difficult to do. Yeah, um, and I don't think it looks as good as what we do here. And the other thing is saying, turning the back. Um, and again, I don't think it adds much to the appearance of the dance, it adds somewhat to the risk. <laughs> now let's worry about um, Brighton Camp. Yeah. Well, in the six, middles face down with the sticks above their heads, and the tops hit them. <laughs> Middles face up, uh, <coughs> the sticks above the heads, and the bottom to them. <laughs> the evens put the sticks above the heads and face eight from the set. Evens and the odds hit them. <laughs> and then the odds put their sticks up and the evens. <laughs> now, you'll notice that not everybody gets a hit every time. So, what do we do? When the middles face down, middles face down and tops hit, number six hits number five. Oh. When the middles face up and the bottoms hit up, number two hits number one. Two. Then all the e all the odds hit evens, all the evens hit odds. You half pay, do a half pay, <laughs> and so as not to confuse, the middles don't do a mirror image. They do exactly what they did before. The middles face down, and the new tops hit down. Right? Middle space up. Bottom up. The odds hit. So the calls are middles down, middles up, odds hit, evens hit. Right? Or you it him and he hits you. <laughs> On the second half, are we reverse? What's the end to when we're not on middle for here? The, the odds are across. Even it's the odd, because it's the only way of making your cement. Right? Half pay back to the base. Half pay back to the base. Now, what you should notice, I think, in the middle here, is that you're beginning to turn all the time. One, two, three. Four. Keep going the same way. Where possible, keep turning to your right. Also, don't just hold the stick up and throw it. Turn it yeah, it's up, up for each one, right? Yes. Let's just try a chorus, just for the hell of it.
first started with a stick, it's rather than a handkerchief. <laughs> it's not it's not a nutty girl, you see. Um, there's no problem in nutty girl in telling you that, that in the hay the middles always go up. Right, in other words, it's, it's relative to the music, not relative to the number on your back in this tradition. Yeah, and that, because in that dance you do it up, you go up every time. And I should have mentioned that when we're doing the um, green sleeves, let alone nightingale in this dance. This, that just adds to the confusion. <laughs> the, the middles go up, so it matters where you are relative to the music in this dance, as you may have already noticed in the course. Right, yeah. I apologise for forgetting that. I am getting old. <laughs> right, let's try it again. Yeah.
think it might be broken, therefore they put it in a plastic away and come back on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just in case. Oh, don't even need a stick, just do that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Can you see it? Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, it's just a little bit. Of course, a lot of the evidence was based on court cases. <laughs> 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 if 
things of that sort. Um, Headington Quarry um, claimed that at the turn of the century, they used to be all be very great friends with the people over here at Wheatley, and the two gangs, the Morris men, used to go around a lot together. And for years, the quarry men had assumed that Wheatley's dancers were very similar to quarry. Until you actually see Wheatley's dancers, which have a few names in common, but very little else. As always, you know, I think people were much more tolerant of differences <laughs> at one time. Um, at the sort of collecting time, uh, Sharp, you know, had visited his aunt at Headington, and the Quarry Morris, you know, eight of season, turned up and danced in front of him. Now, it's, it's like the story of when Christopher Columbus arrived at this island in the Caribbean, and he rushed down to claim it for Spain, and they to say, hey, what are you doing? He says, I've discovered America. <coughs> no, we've discovered you. <laughs> we live it. And I like to believe, in fact, it was the Headington Morris that discovered Sharp, <laughs> not the other way around. Right. Now, that was Boxing Day. 1899, which is the close to the end of the century as you can get, as it were. Um, and Sharp did nothing with the material, basically tunes he collected. Um, he used them to illustrate his lectures, because he was making a living giving lectures, make folk songs on, in the sort of 1903, 1905 period. And it was in 1905 when Mary Neal, Esperance Club, who and had successful performances of the songs, you know, folk songs from Somerset. She wrote to Sharp and said, did he actually have any knowledge of dancers? And he, having Kimber's name, gave her Kimber's name and the village to go to. Uh, Mary and her friend went out to Oxford and walked out to uh, Haddington Quarry, much to the amazement of the locals, because nobody went to the quarry here, to find Kimber. And invited Kinder, not really knowing in the back background, to come up with a friend to London to teach the Morris. And Kinder, being a wise old soul even then, you know, coming up 40, uh, he took his cousin, you know, and each time he was invited to London, he took somebody different so that nobody else was able to muscle in you know, <laughs> on this paying proposition. Because every time he went to London, his boss sacked him. <laughs> not working, you see. So he was sitting in that. Enough when he came back, he quit promptly got a job with somebody else, so he didn't sort of worry about it. He was making quite a decent side on it. The problem was, of course, is that Kimber himself wasn't actually a Morris dancer. He'd you know, been brought up in the Morris family, had, um, as a boy, as it were, been indoctrinated with the Morris, learned tunes, lot tunes from his parents, but not actually been in a properly cons constructed side as a dancer. And this was shown that, that Mary Neal so sort of started complaining at the th first three months to London, he actually taught the dancers differently each time. Uh, and of course what Kimber was doing is that when he discovered there was something in it, he went back and actually spoke to all the Morris dancers. Uh, the old dancers in Headington, and he also used to go and check what they told him with his father. The problem with his father, his father turned Methodist, you know, offer drink and all that sort of thing. Although, having said that, I mean that's what's in the record. Um, from the collectors, those Kimbers still alive, so the thought of Kimber's dad actually being teetotal is the funniest thought they've ever had. You know? <laughs> he spent all of his time drunk and sober, that's all he said. Still, he went, went in check on. Certainly, Kimber's father had, had trouble in the village at some stage and had to move the other side of Oxford. You know, and that, that's real trouble <laughs> when, when you have to read. And Kimber, of course, you find crying around it. Everybody in the village, then, when people start to cry about how authentic Kimber was, everybody claimed to have taught him. Because, in a sense, everybody had. <laughs> you see. Um, when the row started between Sharp and Mary Neal about what was the Morris for, you know, how do you use it, what were the standards you apply, and bear in mind this is a row between two people, neither which actually knew what they were doing it for really, you know, they just imagine uh, what it was for. Uh, the question came up about Mary Neal was, you know, not using the right sort of sources, you know, the wrong sort of people. And she had a policy, quite rightly, of inviting people to London. And I think over the time, about 30 dancers were invited to this place. 
the country to go in down to teach directly on the basis that in the sort of thing we're doing, uh, word of foot is the only real way of transmittal, you know, writing it down and trying to always run into trouble. The trouble is, of course, is that the dancers that were available were people like Sam Bennett and his Ilmington side, which was far removed from the, the side that Sharp had, you know, had reconstructed, really, from his interviews with old dancers. The Abingdon side, which at that time was particularly uh, poor, we have a photograph of them, uh, all six, all in different costumes, all on different feet. Well, not all six different <laughs> from this to that, <laughs> you know, all doing something different. So they, you know, the Morris was in a pretty crummy state. And of course the only lot who danced reasonably well at that time were Bampton. And when they were invited up to London, um, apparently they got blind drunk. So, and they didn't, they, they announced what dance they were doing, but they actually did something else each time. Because they didn't want to do that and dance. And they, they genuinely made themselves a nuisance. And Sharp was a little bit, um, offended by all that sort of thing. So there was a sort of a, a row grew up between them and she quite rightly said, but you know, I mean, you're relying on Kimber, you're, you're heading to Morris, you're basic there, and how authentic is Kimber, you know? He didn't actually meet any of Sharp's criteria as somebody who'd been trained in the traditional side, danced for it for years, and things of that sort. Uh, I wanted to say that Kimber wasn't an authentic source of the Morris, you know, we weren't arguing about that, we were just sort of arguing about really um, definitions, you know, of what was tradition and things of that sort. Of course, that was, I bet the other element one's got to remember, of course, at that time was that Mary Neal was one of the original uh, committee members of WSPU, a women's suffragette, and other, though she was sort of a figurehead member <coughs> and not particularly active, uh, certainly not in the political sense. Uh, Sharp was a theoretical. Um, Fabian, uh, and that's important as well because his team didn't drink and smoke. They ate ice cream. <laughs> well, at a time when ice cream was novel, you know. <laughs> but, um, again, couldn't see either way. And bearing in mind that Sharp had already had a job of teaching the royal family, the children of royal family music, uh, was actually negotiating with the Board of Education to have folk song and dance in the uh, school curriculum. It didn't help to be tied in with somebody who was clearly lead, in a leading light in the suffragette movement at a time when they were throwing themselves under horses' hooves and things like this. So it is inevitable that there was a break between them and so on. And so the authenticity, things like Bidford, you know, they said, oh, well, Bidford couldn't be authentic. It must have been imported from somewhere else and things like this. You know, the row got out of hand. I mean, letters to the national newspaper sort of thing. That was a really, really well to see. But it's you know, rather fun. Um, they used, Mary Nilsfrey used to dance for society, oh, society for the against the adulteration of food, because you know, they used to put chalk and flour and things like that. You know, we don't have to do that nowadays, but I suppose we do the equivalent. <laughs> I've seen a barley shirt around, haven't I? Barley, yes, I was wearing it. You were with that's right, yes, yes, because I had this wonderful outing with them to Dudley and we tried to join the CMD demonstration and the inspector came up and said, what are you going to do? We're going to join him. Oh no, why not we come over to join us? Oh no, I've got enough trouble when you go back to the bloody shopping centre and dance. <laughs> 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 I drink this at the time. said the EFDS seemed quite happy with what they were doing, so he didn't see it was right to complain about it. In 1936, Kenwood and Scope uh, sat down with them and realised that actually Kimber, if asked, would actually teach different, not only more dancers, but different versions of things and so on. 
So when the side started again in 1949, they really had to accept Kimber's word for everything, though they were suspicious that when they went to festivals and saw a dance like Princess Royal, next day he remembered they had eaten Princess Royal. <laughs> the first time was all right, but after half a dozen nights, they began to wonder, and so on. And of course, the times that Kimber it practices just go up and change the dance. They said, no, it's like this. There was no way they could argue. Um, all right, so quarry as dance now is not the same as it was. You know, it's had a fair bit of uh, influence. And if you judge quarry by, of course, what was published by Sharp, uh, always remember the alternatives in the appendix of one of the books are the correct versions. <laughs> you know, it was Sharp's way of admitting he was wrong. So they actually admitting he was well, I'm wrong. It's really wrong, you know. Yeah. Right. Let's learn the figures of the normal sort of water. Um, stick dancers, so it's foot up twice. Ordinary stepping. Back step is just hop step and a jump. The thing about Headington is a pretty upright posture. A little bit more military than most. You know, we can only say that. Kimber dance like that, he is the source. Right? It means the arms are straighter and stiffer than normal. Right? Now the great thing about Eddington, it bakes is a great deal. You know, they actually get up and down off the ground quite a lot, although it doesn't look like it to start with, but when you see the way the heads move, you realise that that's just a little bit of uh, stepping on the spot you do. Back step forward, as it were, 
and they get there on the jump only. So in fact, they don't all arrive together. You arrive in two patches. How do backsteppers work? Oh, because as the backstep is hopping, it's like this. <laughs> it's when we get to this that we're going to have trouble. <laughs>
immediately. Right? Now let's have a look at yourself and do it. Go ask yourself if you did it with six tapping in half. Cross 
over and turn to face on these capers. So, one down the D, the D, down the D, down the D. And then while we do one, two, three, four, we hit, hold it up.
back then, corners cross, and it's half A, foot up and down, corners cross, half A, and caper up, right? We're going to start from the middle, that's right, back to back.
been the traditional side because of the dance. And as far as I know, they did dance for a few years, but they've not been seen to do it for a decade or more now. So I went into the public domain. It's quite funny, isn't it? Well, it's not like any other. I mean, the figures are the reversed order, for example. <laughs> I mean, so I'm not sure, well, I'm sure what they did was actually decide to do something Absolutely. which was different from everything else. Yeah. Yeah. Probably yeah. thinking yeah. all the things that yeah. Kim's yeah. sister were wrong. Yeah. No. Yeah. no. of dancers like this, because although the, the legal situation is that a notation I get by taking a film and writing it down myself is mine, I only have troubles by copy other people's notations, I'm sure there's an awful lot of goodwill to be lost, if there's any left. <laughs> <laughs> I'm retiring, I'm going to go in a blaze of hate. <laughs> well, we're going to do Rodney now, anyhow. Um, Basically, the figures we've got already, so let's practice the stick tapping. <laughs>
step, except the first figure is round. Now, can we have a scope here collected from Kimber that you turn out to go in range? Everybody turns out. So you turn to your right shoulder going back to go into rounds, and you go halfway round the set so that you can do a clash across, a low clash. Now, this is again different. You hold the stick by one end, which is why the stick should be shorter, right? And you start off you know, with the sticks crossed low, and all the clashes in the dance are low. Right? So let's just walk it right shoulder. Every turn right shoulder going back, turn out, go halfway round, that's twice round, yeah. hit across. Turn out, going back the other way. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I put the words in the wrong order. Otherwise, there's no foot up, that changes foot up. Otherwise, the figures are the same, right? Now, the chorus. Everybody did.
cha-cha, you know. <laughs> Use the right hand to start with. One, 